Home networks and home labs. These are two things that are really nice to have if you're a huge nerd. You've probably heard this pitch before, but with cloud services like Google and Microsoft, all of your data is stored somewhere else in the cloud, and it could potentially be deleted for random or arbitrary reasons, which sucks. If you host files and data at your home, however, you get more control over your data, but the price can be, well, pricey, and it could easily spiral into a mess of configurations in different systems. I already do IT stuff as a job, so I don't want to mess with more technology than I already do, which is why I bought a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro. But first, I want to go over my past environment. I did have an AT&T router provided to me by AT&T, and to give it credit, it's not the worst thing I've ever used in my life. There's some options for DHCP IP addressing for assigning IP addresses, which every computer and phone needs to access networking infrastructure. You could do some port forwarding stuff, you can change Wi-Fi settings, and you can monitor some client devices. It doesn't do these things particularly well though, and more complex networking options like VLAN configurations are just not available. Not that I really expected them to be, this is primarily for average consumers that want to hook their TV up to the internet and that's it. But I'm not the average consumer, I'm an exceptional consumer. I have a file server running Unraid, a Proxmox hypervisor running some virtual machines, and a bunch of other wireless devices including a Quest 3 VR headset, and some other stuff. For now, let's look at stuff. And by stuff I mean the thing. Alright, so we've got a few things here to take a look at. We have the unit itself and I'm going to shine a flashlight on it to make it look all weird and metallic, so that's kind of cool. On the side here, we have the mounting brackets where you can screw it into a server rack, which I clearly do not have. We have a 1.3 inch little touchscreen. It looks kind of cool right now in the default idle animation, but we will take a look at that closer in a bit. We have a 3.5 inch hard drive slot for storing video stuff. We'll kind of talk about that later too. We have eight gigabit ethernet RJ45 connectors. I want to say it's a gigabit uh, WAN connection for hooking it up to your router, which I currently have it set up like that. And then we have two SFP ports for 10 gigabit. Uh, the top one is for WAN and the bottom one is to connect it to other switches and things like that. And the back has a power cord connection and a DC battery backup thing, but you know, I don't really want to go back there because it's kind of dusty and stuff, so. So the touchscreen has a few handy options. I'm going to try to hold the camera as steady as I can, but I'm just going to click on this little thing. We'll start with the network sub menu. So if you, I think you just click on it. So it shows you the throughput. So we have our upload and download speeds in megabits per second, and we have okay internet, so that's probably good, right? So here we have the Wi-Fi experience. Uh, it's pretty good at 97%. We have six clients connected right now. And speaking of the clients, here they are. We have wired, wireless, and guest. So that is cool. Then we have our version number for the system within the Unify controller, but we'll take a look at that a bit later. And the next one is protect, because I actually have a little Foscam cheapo camera up there that I've adopted. I'll talk about that later. But if we go back here and just click on this, we have zero motion events because it's not configured to use the motion events. We have one camera online, and that's our version. That's about all we get from the touch screen. And for the settings, we could change the brightness of this front panel. We can change the background color, but I like blue, so I will leave it as is. We have the fan speed control. I'll leave it on auto. We have device control, and you can hit shut down if you really want to, but I'm just gonna leave that go for now. Next is the about section, which kind of just shows you the uh, system information for this device specifically. So we have our CPU and memory usage. We have our IP address for WAN and our LAN. Uh, I'm just gonna censor the WAN, not that it really matters. Uh, I have AT&T as a provider, so that's my public IPv4 address. And the LAN one doesn't really matter, it's just the default one I set to it. We have our temperature, and we have our hard drive information, so it shows as optimal, gives us our model, shows the size, temperature, and the bad sector count, which is kind of nice to have. Next, we have our uptime and we have our hardware board MAC address, which I'm just gonna censor just for fun. But you know, kind of all in this little screen right there, kind of nice to have. So now that we covered the physical device, what does the Dream Machine do software-wise that Nintendo don't? 
VLANs, or virtual local area networks, are a way to logically segment one network into multiple. What this means in practice for my use case is that I can separate my important devices from my unimportant ones, so if I buy some kind of cheap Internet of Things device that is kind of sketchy, I can let it only access the internet and not any of my cool stuff on my file server, like this picture. You could also link different switches together with VLANs and have computers on different switches be in the same virtual network, but that's beyond the scope of this video, and it's also kind of expensive. I just got a mortgage last month and I can't be buying $100 switches anymore. Ubiquiti is doing some cool stuff. They have a bunch of other devices like security cameras, door access controllers, phones, switches, wireless access points, network attached storage devices, and more. As such, if you want to use these things, you have to get a Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway to manage these devices, and the Dream Machine Pro is one of these. For me, I can do a few things right off the bat. With Ubiquiti Protect, I can adopt a cheap security camera I got for free and connect it to the Dream Machine and use the hard drive slot to store its video output. I was previously using Shinobi for my network video recording stuff, which worked fine, but the Unify system is a lot easier to use for basic home stuff. One thing I may check out in the future is Ubiquiti's UNAS Pro, which could replace my Unraid server with a more traditional file server. I'd imagine it would be fairly plug and play. But bummer, I don't have one. Only if Ubiquiti would send one to a channel that has like 400 subscribers. That'd be real nice of them. The other Ubiquiti things I use are their wireless access points. The Quest 3 VR headset likes having 6E Wi-Fi. I had an Archer A6 router set up in my room, but it only supported 2.4 and 5 GHz. So my Quest 3 headset did not have the fastest possible wireless speed. But I just bought a U7 Pro and threw it in my room, so now it's a little bit smoother when playing any PC VR games. If you want to get real fancy with it, you can get a Dream Machine Special Edition, which has some power over Ethernet ports so you can go directly from the UDM SE to your access points, but in my case, I'm using some Ethernet power injectors because I already had some on hand. But if you don't want to spend like $500 on this stuff, there's some other cheaper options available like the Ubiquiti Cloud Keys if you're on a budget and you still want to work within the Ubiquiti ecosystem. I just don't know all the details, but their website is pretty easy to use and view. A cool thing is that once you create a Ubiquiti Unify account, you can access the system management from anywhere. This means that you don't have to be at home or on site to configure the system after the initial setup. This makes it handy for checking different things remotely, including the Protect system, which is like the video camera stuff. And within this UI, you can view all the different Ubiquiti devices and adopt them to your environment from there. The analytics within the Unified dashboard are kind of cool as well. You can see what your devices are talking to. For example, I have an Alex Maker IPS PR2 on my network, which is connected to my wireless network. You know, it's kind of a cool little desk clock. Now throwing any random device onto your network may not be the smartest thing to do, but in this case it's only communicating with a time server in China, so that's a good sign. If it was sending out other packets, we could track them a bit to see what was going on. It also tracks the MAC address, of course. In this case, it looks like the IPS PR2 is using an ESP32 microcontroller to handle all of the Wi-Fi capabilities and display stuff. Now, the thing is, you could probably piece together an open source home lab environment where all of the things I mentioned could be set up for free, which, if that sounds like more fun to you, I would check out this website to view a whole bunch of different open source services and solutions. But with myself already doing tech stuff every day, I just want something simple. While there is a CLI available, you don't really have to use it. It's mostly ClickOps friendly, so it's easy to use and you can Google what things mean. The hardest thing was the initial setup for me, as the Dream Machine wants to speak directly to the internet and serve as the main network router, so that's something to consider for your ISP. In my case with AT&T, their router gives me the option to pass through the WAN IP of my network to a specific MAC address, in which case I just used the one for the Dream Machine, then it started to work fine. ISP stuff can be weird, so if you don't know if it's going to work on your network, maybe just call their customer support line and just wait for 20 minutes until they pick up the phone. Now, would I recommend a Dream Machine Pro for everybody in the whole world? Probably not. 
at the end of the day, it's just networking equipment and it can be seen as overly complicated. But if you like to mess around with configurations and you want a better idea of what's happening with your home or business network, sure, why not? It's a decent entry point into some more complex networking concepts and it's fun to mess around with. For around $380 new, I'd say it's worth it in my case, and I can always add some more ubiquity stuff to my environment easily in the future with it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. As far as this channel goes, I'll be trying to upload a bit more things to it going forward, but, you know, I'm moving and stuff, and it's kind of a whole thing, and, you know, uh, just life happens. But thanks for sticking around, uh, and I will see you later, so bye.